Hey guys, welcome back to Musings of Mavri, where I'm your host Mavri, and today we're going to be looking at Tensera episode 11. So, quickly recap the last episode, uh, Rimuru managed to name all the ogres who evolved into Kijin, and so they are now his companions, I guess. Uh, their names, I'll probably remember them once they have some more screen time, as it is right now, there's too many, so I don't want to, you know, memorize somebody's name, but then later on we'll find out that they're not going to uh, appear that often anyways. So, yeah, it, it is what it is. For now, I'm just going to call them by their hair color, because that's how Rimuru named them, right? And then also, so last time where we left off, we found that the orcs were going around with an army and evading all the different villages or other races so that's why the ogres were forced to Rimuru's village in the first place and now they're going up against the lizard man so in this episode there's three things that i'm going to be looking out for one is um what are now that the ogres have evolved into kijin uh what kind of abilities do they have and what are their strengths and you know what 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 role do they play as members of Rimuru's party. The second part is I want to take a look at how exactly uh, large-scale combat is utilized in this series. So really looking forward to that. Although in this case, Rimuru's uh, party is probably more you know elite focused with only a certain number of people. I doubt they're going to use the entire village to fight. Although it's possible, right? But then again, last time, I think the orc army numbered about 200,000, if I remember correctly. So that's not going to be a, a number where you can just simply fight back with 300 goblins. Um, although it might, we might see the lizard men and their army going up against the, the orcs. So it'd be kind of interesting to see how field combat, or field combat works in this series. And the third thing that I want to note, take note of is in regards to uh, the prince, basically. So the prince of the lizard people. Now, the reason I want to take uh, special attention to him is because this is the first time where we're going to be involved into the politics of a race within this Tensura's uh, world, right? So I mentioned before that one of the things I like to look at is how an isekai character can change the dynamics of the current world politics uh, within the world that he or she is reincarnated or transferred into because normally they would have some OP powers or some really advanced knowledge which will change the whole dynamic of the world so this might be our first foray into this happening so without further ado let us get into the episode uh, I skipped the opening as always and let us begin in three, two, one, go. This is the princess. Hmm? Oh, so that's why she's dressed like that. <laughs> Some heron fighting already? Oh, 
<laughs> I guess she's not a good cook. But then again, he's a slime, so he can probably eat anything. Oh. You probably don't want to taste this, Rimuru. <laughs> I like how he's self-aware. OMG. Oh, <laughs> He's gonna end up beating Gopta out at, right? What? <laughs> Why an angle from the right? <laughs> Holy shit. R.I.P. R.I.P. and pieces. What is with this BGM? You know, I'm seriously wondering if his men really believe that he is great. Or is he just surrounding himself by some ass kissers?
Okay, I think it's more like he surrounds himself by ass kissers. Just leave. I'm curious as well. Seriously, his BGM. Right. Can we just get over? Now that's pretty profound. Thank you. 
Oh, now you're gonna get it. All right, let's get it on already. Yes, poison resistance now. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Seriously, Remro, just like lightning strike him or something. Yeah, there had to be some reason why Gopta is specifically here.
Well, that was like a waste of 10 minutes. That much is obvious. So basically they're rehashing what the chieftain of the lizard men already mentioned last episode. an audience. It's a dryad? Well, that was quick. You know, I like how Rumuru always has these fantasies of how these different races look like, but they actually turn out to be even better than what he imagined. Torini. Sure. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna make going to make sure nothing's at the end, and I'll see you guys in just a second. And that was episode 11 of Tensura. So the episode didn't really quite go the way that I thought, right? In the beginning, I mentioned that there were three main things I wanted to look at uh, within this episode. Uh, that I figured would come up since it's, you know, the second to last episode of this first season. But apparently they're either not looking at it from a two-season viewpoint, or they just are going to fit in the finale within one episode. Although, I'm guessing it's not like that, so it's probably more in the case of this is not a one-season, two-season kind of thing, but it's just the entire, uh, just the entire series is going to last two seasons Long. So 24 episodes was already uh, one season, you could say. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't really make sense for them to essentially put this episode as sort of like a 
like a humor filler throwaway episode. I, I hesitate to call it a filler episode because it's not really that. It still drives the plot along. It's just that uh, it drove it along slowly, right? That it was definitely more focused on the humor than it was on actually developing the story or any of the other world settings. So starting from you know the very beginning where they had this kind of, I guess, humorous harem interactions or, you know, how Xion is apparently a bad cook, you know, using that trope. And I love how Rimuru himself, being a modern person, right, uh, touches on how this is such a overused and cliche trope, but they still use it anyway. So it's self-aware, right? But they still use it because it has comedic value. And apparently not just comedic value, but actual value as well, since Gopta managed to gain poison resistance within that scene. So, um, I, yeah, let's, let's talk a little about that. I know that he only showed up later to, to say that he gained poison resistance, but I just thought it was kind of... Um, so apparently, if we look at how Rimuru first gained his resistances, as well as how he gained his skills and how Gopta gained his resistance, we can sort of see like in that this world's uh, skill system is sort of based on familiarity and repetition and experience rather than something that is, um, I guess you could say, innately learned or a skill tree type of thing. So. I mentioned before that I always like to look at these kinds of fantasy works or isekai works from more of a meta setting. So what exactly is the systems and mechanics that are put into this current series, this current world, which the author has envisioned? And in this case, uh, apparently it's not. this world is not really operating on a skill tree, or even if it does have some sort of like skill system, it's maybe circular or... It's, it's not, you know, like a generic tree where you go from one to one to one to one, right? So, of course, we got some hints of that from the very early episodes where Rimuru essentially combined a lot of different single skills into one larger over-encompassing uh, skill, right? Uh, and in this case, we find that, oh, so yeah, so in order to gain poison resistance, just get some eat some poison right so also if you want to gain heat resistance just go to somewhere where it's hot if you want to gain um i don't know if you want to gain sort of like uh let's say an iron iron body or something so you probably have to get hit a lot of times and then you would naturally learn that skill so i guess it's kind of interesting i wonder how how big a part it's going to play on in the future, especially now that we've established Gopta is, you know, he, he's not just there for comic relief or anything, right? He actually has a purpose, so, which is why he is tagging along to a lot of these different episodes. I mean, seriously, he has probably more screen time than most of the other characters here, right? <laughs> in fact, Gopta, you know, he might even have the... No, 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 I don't think he has the second, I don't think he has the second highest screen time, but it, he's definitely up there for being someone who hasn't really done anything so far. Um, yeah, and I also found it kind of funny how, you know, basically everybody accepted that Gopta was probably dead after eating Xi'an's uh, cooking. So, you know, no tears of sadness or anything, no, <laughs> nothing, no mention of how it was a tragedy, just, uh, he's dead. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. And then later on, oh, hey, you didn't die. I, I just thought. So that's why I said this This episode is more built on humor, right? It's it's not really um, having very important things interlaced within. Or actually, you could say that it has important things interlaced within, but the majority of it is focused on the humor, the comedy. So, you know, besides Gopta, uh, probably the biggest thing here would be the duel between the Lizard Prince uh, Giburu. I believe, and uh, Gopta, or his sort of like conf semi-conflict with the Rimuru and the other guys. So I'm kind of wondering how that will come into play, because honestly I don't think this, this prince is that big of a threat, right? So he's not going to be one of those recurring uh, antagonists who, you know, due to Rimuru, uh, <laughs> 
um, making him lose honor a long time ago and turning into a form by your side, which I mentioned before with Vesta as well. This one seems more like since his own father and the lizard man, you know, the, like the core of of the lizard man kingdom, they already know that Gibriel is kind of out of it, right? He's not exactly the <laughs> He's not exactly the smartest of the bunch, let's just say. So, um, I doubt that he will have very big influence within how uh, the Lizardman Kingdom interacts with Rimuru. So this is probably, which is why I, I, when they were having a duel, I was just like, let's just get this over with, right? It's it's for pure comedic value. There's not really going to be anything substantial to come out of it. He's probably not going to be a recurring. Well, he might be a recurring character, but he's not going to be, uh, you know, one of those major character who's causing a lot of trouble or becoming one of the main antagonists. He might be, but so far, I'm not seeing it. He's just comic relief, and the whole duel was sort of like comic relief. <laughs> the whole time, I was just thinking to myself, come on, Rimuru, just zap him once, and let's just get this over with. But, meh, it is what it is. Um... What I really wanted to, to see this episode was, like I mentioned before, um, I so out of the three things that I wanted to see, we only got to see some, which is, in, I guess, regards to the lizard man politics. Even though we didn't really get to see that, at least he, Rumuru had his first initial contact with somebody important from a different kingdom or a different race. Uh, so there was that. Well, I mean, there was the dwarf king before, but that's in the past right now. It's the lizard, lizard man and his... Chieftain and the chieftain's son, or want to be chieftain. Um, so, so we got a little bit of that, but we didn't really get anything else about how they're going to fight the orc situation, and we also didn't get to see the uh, abilities or skills of Benimaru and the others, except for maybe the body double of the blue hair guy, <laughs> the blue hair guy. Um, so yeah, uh, that's. You know, not not much has happened in this episode. I guess we also left on a bit of a cliffhanger with a with tall Torani Torani, who is a dryad apparently, um, and I guess giving a quest or a request or some sort to Rimuru to defeat the orc army, which he's probably going to do anyways, with or without this request. Um, so we'll have to see what how this whole thing ties in in the next episode. Probably the Dryad is going to offer some something good in return for for Rimuru's assistance in this. Uh, I mean, there has to be a reason why she's here, right? It's not just to uh, tell give a reason for Rimuru to fight the orc lord or the orcs because that's something that he's eventually going to have to do anyways so i don't think it's going to be such trivial as that probably there's going to be something major that comes out of this dryad what it is yeah she doesn't i don't think she's going to be a companion but yeah who knows she's she she looks nice right <laughs> and yeah i guess that that would bring me to a, a comment i made during the episode as well where you know, Rimuru always has these sort of like fantasies about these different um, races, since he's apparently a big otaku in his former life, uh, playing a lot of Hiroge and whatnot in, um, you know, in his in his past. And like I said, the interesting thing is, even though he has all these fantasies, they actually turn out to be even better than his fantasies. So I guess that's that's like a nice nice change of pace. I, I, guess, I guess you could say because, you know, the normal comedic type of thing to do would be to have some kind of expectation, but then to also subvert the expectation by, you know, maybe somehow all the elf girls are all fat and whatnot, you know, so different from what we normally expect. Um, but yeah, that, that about sums up this episode. Again, not really much has happened. Uh, it's more of a humor filler episode to me and hopefully next episode we'll get back to the main storyline which is how they are going to uh, manage this orc situation and yeah I guess that's about it uh, let me know if there's anything I missed or anything you want to comment below um, 
this series has apparently been the best one for getting people to engage within the, uh, the videos that I put up. So, hey, it's quite nice to see that there's so many fans out there of uh, Tensura. So, if you want to say anything, just say so, and I'll be happy to respond. So, anyways, that has been Tensura episode 11. This has been Mavery uh, from Musings of Mavery, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.